All right, let's talk about geometric probability. Uh, we actually have already kind of done this before. We're just going to add a few more details, okay? So first, as we dive into the geometric and then tomorrow binomial probability that we're going to do, um, there's a couple of things that have to happen that we've already kind of, we've kind of been just assuming are going on, but let's go ahead and define those now. So in order to be able to do these geometric or binomial probabilities, we need to have uh, bits or bins depending on the situation. So let's talk about what those mean. B stands for binary. And that means <clears throat> that the situation we're talking about is two options, a success or a failure. You get a green light or you don't get a green light. The car is wearing, a, the car driver's wearing a seatbelt or not wearing a seatbelt, okay? You get what you're looking for or you don't. <clears throat> the I stands for independent. So that means that um, <clears throat> one car, you know, the probab one, one car's results are not affecting the probability of the success in the next car. Okay, so each trial is independent of each other, not affecting the probability of the outcome of the next. The T or the N is going to be where we have the difference between geometric, which we're going to talk about today, versus binomial probability, which we're going to talk about tomorrow. Now, on the geometric, we're going to go until, the trials go until there is a success. And we've already seen this before. You know, they tell us <clears throat> you don't get the first, you don't make the first shot until the fifth shot, okay, or whatever it is. So the defined location. So I know all the things in front of it are failures until that fifth one is a success. And then S kind of reiterates the quality that comes from the independent component, but that the probabilities are um, the same. The fact that the first one happened did not change the probability of the next. So the probability stays the same from trial to trial. All right. So here we go. We're going to start here. And let me kind of shade this up here. And so our first situation is one where um, we have this called geometric probability. And those are where a lot of times we just reason through that process. Okay. And that's because we're going to just write out what happens until the first success. And so here we have a situation where our basketball player makes his foul shots 80% of the time. So that probability of a success is uh, 0.8. Okay, so making that shot is 0.8. So that's our probability. And then we have you make the shot or you do not make the shot. So here comes identifying the bits that we have. Of course, that binary is you make the shot or you do not make the shot. Failure, success is making it. Failure is not making it. Independent, we are told that he does not get emotionally involved or whatever happens is not uh, affecting the other, his results. So we are told each shot is independent of the other shots. We are looking uh, T, it doesn't actually tell us this yet, but I looked ahead at the next problem and we're finding the probability until the fifth, so we want the probability that he misses his shot for the first time on the fifth. So he makes them until the fifth attempt where he then misses it. So that's our trials are going until. So we're defining that. And of course, that probability is saying success of 80% each time. So here we did this like before, where we just have him making the shot until he misses it on the fifth. Okay, so we need this and this and this and this and then misses it. Find the probability that he makes the first basket on the fourth try. Okay, so we, I kind of went through that first one really fast. Let me give you a moment to uh, process making the first basket on the fourth try. So the first three are failures, and then he makes the fourth one. Of course, you can write this out in exponential notation, and I think I start doing that after this problem. 
okay? And then find the probability. Now this is where it gets interesting. Find the probability that he makes his first basket on one of those first three shots. So there's a couple of ways that we can think about this. We can think about this as he makes it on the first, or he makes it on the second, or he makes it on the third. And then we would be adding those three scenarios together. So he making it on one of those first three shots. So here is one way of thinking about this. He makes it on the first, or he makes it on the second, or he makes it on the third. Okay, And I think that that is probably the most natural way to think about it. And it also is the best way to look forward into what we're going to be building tomorrow when we do our um, binomial probabilities. Okay, but you technically could, what could happen is, like on this first time he makes it, well, I'm not defining what happens afterwards, so he could make it or miss, whichever. So kind of what's happening is... It's also one minus the probability that none of the three baskets are a success. And so that means one minus failure for all of them. So that comes out the same way. So if your brain had kind of thought of it that way, that's okay. But we will use this building on in this accumulation concept later or to starting tomorrow and, and even a little bit today as well. All right. Now, how many attempts do you expect him to make on average before he misses his first shot? And with what standard deviation? So we want how many attempts on average? So we're going to get the mean and the standard deviation of the distribution of baskets that he makes and such. So there's formula for this. And so if we take a look at the next page, this is the probability section of the formula chart that you are going to be able to use. So you see this here, these top two formulas, those are the ones that you used on your last section before you took your last quiz on the conditional probabilities. But now we're gonna get into what is called discrete random variables. And what makes something discrete is there is a finite um, poss a number of possibilities. Okay, abilities. So what happens is a lot of times if we have, say, whole number amounts of options, like you can make one trial. I mean, you can make one shot. You can make two shots. You can make three shots. Those are going to define a finite amount of possibilities. As opposed to something that is so the opposite would be a situation that is continuous. And continuous are where there are infinitely many possibilities. And what I mean by that is, you know, if you're looking at your number line, then we don't just have one, two, three. We don't have just a set number, you know, of trials that we can reach. But, for example, the distance you can throw. So the distances you can throw a baseball can be just like measured to a really, really, really small, infinitely many small distance you know, 28.9993 feet or whatever. So that would be considered a continuous situation. And that is when we end up kind of using the normal model probabilities because it is a continuous number line. Okay, a continuous number line. Now, with discrete random variables, which is what we are talking about this week, or actually this whole unit, discrete random variables, then there's those finite probabilities. The, um, okay, number of tails that you can get on the flip of a coin. 
the number of uh, shoes that you can have. Okay, so next we're going to go ahead then, and uh, we'll talk about this binomial tomorrow, but if you notice right here on the formula chart, we have the expected value. So the expected number of items you have to go until you get that one success. And so here that is, that one over P. So in our case, we would expect him to go one over 0.8 until he makes his first shot. Now, this expected values, do you see how this is a mu? That is an average. Hence, this turns into a continuous number. So we went from discrete, finite possibilities into tabulating averages. And so then we have 1.25 shots on average to get a, um, to make a shot. Once we changed it into this average, and then we'll have that standard deviation formula right here. So I went ahead and I filled that in with P being the probability of success. Once we have those, then we can see that we're gonna, we could kind of make a normal model um, and do some normal model continuous probabilities. So we'll bridge into that later this week, that connection between finite and discrete to the normal model math that is continuous. All right, now, so the next thing I want to do is teach you how to do some computing of this in a more succinct fashion on your calculator. And so there are, and I think that this might have gotten a little bit mixed up whenever it printed off on your packet. So this thing called geometric PDF is what you are doing when you are getting a particular place for the first success. Okay, so that's when they say, I want that first success to be on the fifth shot. So then I'll show you where this is in your calculator. Geometric PDF of, you would put that probability, so I want the success probability to be in the this place. So it'd be success probability, comma, the fifth place. So let's see here. Yeah, I um, let's do that, in fact, with our um, problem that we had before down here. When they said, find the probability that he makes his first basket on the fourth try. So pull your calculator up. And do you remember where the normal model distributions were located under second VARs? And so then you see your normal PDF, which we never used normal PDF, and then our normal CDF, which is the cumulative area. This is actually down at the very, very bottom. So honestly, I scroll up to get to the very bottom of the list, and you see geometric PDF, and then we'll talk in a moment about geometric CDF. So I'm going to scroll up to that geometric PDF and I'm going to hit enter. Now, if you do not have a menu that shows up, then you do not have this screen, of course, but you would type in the probability of success. So we wanted that foul shot to be a success on the fourth trial. So that's we want 0.8, the probability of success, to occur on the fourth trial. And so then this will paste it in there. So for those of you who do not have a menu, yours looks like this, geometric PDF 0.8 comma 4. Then you hit enter, and voila, that is what we had gotten over here right here on this point zero zero six four part C. Okay, so that is again doing the geometric PDF places the first success in a particular place. Now, uh, in fact, let's go ahead and do one of those problems.
let, let me let you do that one on your own. So read the next problem and try that problem right now on your own. Now, do keep in mind that using the calculator does not take away the work that has to be shown. You cannot just plop out an answer. You have to write this 0.98. This was the first failures on the fifth chip. So 0.98 to the fourth times 0.02, and then you can go and type it into your calculator <clears throat> just this way. <clears throat> or you could use your geometric PDF, all right? With geometric PDF, it's not that horrific of a thing to usually just calculate straight away, so you may choose to do that. But the other situation, the geometric CDF, is a bit more involved, and you will probably want to utilize the calculator for that. So let's take a look at that. Geometric CDF. Of course, C stands for cumulative, <clears throat> okay? So we are going to have a cumulative probability. And furthermore, we're going to, we, if you have the older operating systems, it always accumulates, accumulates from the bottom, okay? So, if I say I want to have a success on or before the fifth trial, then I could have it on the first trial or, that's addition, the second trial or the third trial or, and so on. And so then I would type in prob the geometric CDF for cumulative, then the probability on the first success that it occurs on. So you want, so let's see here. What's the probability that the first bad chip you find is one of the first five chips you test? So we still have to show work. So here is the long way. In fact, I'm going to, you know, let's talk about this. Here is the long way. Here we have success on the first. Okay, success on the first. Or success on the second. Or success on the third. Or success on the fourth. Or success on the fifth. Okay, but that gets pretty ridiculous. So I actually want to show you an alternative way to show a sequence in a more succinct manner. And so here, and I'll type that out here, um, there's unfortunately wasn't enough room there, but here is how that looks, okay? So if I'm wanting that probability of success on or before the fifth, then I will show the first in the sequence. And so that would show a success, um, which was 0.02, it was looking for a bad chip. So there's a success on the first trial, plus, dot, 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 plus, and now I put the last, um, the last item in the sequence. So that was four failures. So the way that would look is um, 0.98 and then uh, to the fourth power, okay, so 0.98, and then, <laughs> I want to, let me get that parentheses, okay, here we go, to the fourth power, okay, and then that fifth one is a success. So here is the shortcut way for showing the accumulation of a success on the first up to a success on the fifth. And then you can put equals 
And then you can go and calculate it in your calculator, which would look like this. Second vars. I'm going to scroll up to geometric C, D, F for accumulation. And I want that 0 0.02 to occur on or before the fifth trial. FYI, if it had said before the fifth, then I would want it to occur on the fourth or before. So you need to really th think about the location of that success. It is on the fifth because I believe that the formula said, I mean, the problem said, and we'll double check that, the problem said that the success is one of the first five. So it can be on the fifth one. All right, so then I paste that in, geometric CDF of 0.02 on or before the fifth, and that's enter. So there is my probability. So what that did was all this stuff in yellow in one fell swoop, okay? And again, the work you can show is just this to demonstrate a success on the first up to a success on the fifth, and that's your sequence. All right, so let's see what's next. Now, oh, how many chips on average do you think you will have to test until you find one? So how many chips on average until you find one and with what standard deviation? So there we go again. That is our mean probability and our standard deviation. Our mean and our standard deviation. So 1 over 0.02, so 50. I expect to have to look at 50 on average, okay, with a standard deviation of quite large, 49.5. So, okay. So that ends up being your notes, and then you have a couple of these to practice on that I definitely want you to practice on your remaining time in class so that you can get any questions answered and um, before you leave today. All right. Good luck to you.